And we are getting amped up here <laughs> for a tremendous segment of, uh, of great information coming your way over the next half hour here on The Pulse. And uh, we have Carmen Lorenz with us, the uh, director of the New Hampshire Division of Economic Development. Hello. Carmen, nice to see you. Thank you. And uh, Desiree Crossley, the marketing and outreach coordinator for Amped NH. That's A M P E D, right? A M P E D N H dot com, right? Yep. Okay. Amped N H dot com. So, Desiree is the marketing and outreach coordinator for Amped NH or Amped. Uh, what is it all about? We, well, AMPT stands for the Advanced Manufacturing Partnerships and Education. And what that is, is an initiative here in New Hampshire of um, all seven community colleges, as well as more than 100 industry partners in advanced manufacturing and workforce development and economic development agencies. And what we do is we've created under a $20 million federal tax grant um, over two dozen industry uh, guided and uh, approved certificate and degree programs to help close the high-tech skills gap. Outstanding. Mm. Sounds sounds good. Sounds intriguing. So what uh, what is advanced manufacturing? What kind of jobs are there in advanced manufacturing today? There's a vast uh, uh, array of jobs in advanced manufacturing. And here in New Hampshire, we're seeing um, the growth in um, advanced composites, um, robotics and automation, mechatronics. Uh, we have electronics and electromechanics. Um, computer numerical controlled machining or CNC. CNC, see is, that a lot. Yes, that's um, pretty universal for mm -hmm. demand. Um, we also have advanced welding, um, but I think the key to advanced manufacturing today is precision. Um, it's high technology. Uh, it's all computer auto, uh, computer led, um, and what that means is that uh, those STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math skills are even more important now um, than the mechanical skills that uh, people think about, I think, when they think manufacturing. Yeah, it's changed a lot, that's for sure. And uh, these programs, uh, classes, are offered at the uh, community colleges uh, in the state? Yes, at every single one of our community colleges. We have seven in every region of the state, um, and we have either upgraded or opened from new advanced manufacturing labs at every single one of them. Um, and they also address at each one the immediate needs of the industry in that region. So who qualifies? Uh, anyone who uh, meets the enrollment or registration uh, requirements for each program. They do very widely because we offer such a wide array of programs. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say wide array, I mean format um, as well as um, the types of technologies and disciplines that you cover. What are some of the different programs that they have at the colleges? So as I mentioned, we try to address the immediate need in each of the college's regions. Um, so some of the, I think it's easier to talk about discipline than the sure. programs because we have so many programs. Um, but most of our programs cover things like um, precision ma machine tool technology, uh, advanced composites manufacturing, electronics and electromechanics, um, automation, robotics. Also, um, when you put them together, it's mechatronics, um, advanced welding. And believe it or not, there's even more. <laughs> cool. Well, I see on your website it says uh, our programs are designed with expertise from leading employers. Absolutely. That is key. Um, not one of our programs was launched without the guidance, um, the input, uh, and even the approval of uh, groups of our advanced manufacturing partners. And that's important because what that means is that you can guarantee that the, the skills you're learning in our programs are exactly the types of skills that they need. And that you'll be able to get a job after. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We can't promise jobs, but I can tell you that the demand is high all over the state. And we've already seen many of our students hired, sometimes even before they're done their studies. What kinds of people are enrolling in these programs? Is, it, is there any one demographic or is it a range? Um, that's one of the things I think is so cool about this program is it's a wide range. We're seeing everyone from, um, you know, the ones you would expect, your high school graduates looking uh, to start their college careers, all the way through uh, your non-traditional age uh, students. We have people who um, may have been laid off and are looking to get back into the workforce. We have people who just want a complete change in their industry. Um, and, you know, so it's basically... We say 18 to 85. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty wide range. <laughs> yeah. 
We're uh, chatting with uh, Carmen Lorenz, the uh, director of the New Hampshire Division of Economic Development, and Desiree Crosley, the marketing and out- outreach coordinator for Amped New Hampshire, or Amped, and uh, AmpedNH.com is the website where you'll find a lot of great information. But if you have a question, uh, you can give us a call right now, toll free, 866 823 1077, and I'm sure uh, many people are uh, wondering if there is uh, financial aid uh, for these courses. There is financial aid for these courses. Um, and just like with everything else we do, we try to offer a nice wide variety of choices. Um, so, of course, this is uh, eligibility, eligibility um, based. So, you'd want to call in and check with the college of your interest to see what programs you might qualify for. But we offer everything from your traditional um, grants and loans um, that you might expect at a, at a college. Um, but there's also training aid available from some of our um, state agency partners um, for those who are unemployed and looking to get reemployed. Um, w- some of our students have received almost full funding for their training uh, right. through these agencies. The other thing that I always like to mention um, is that there's also help for employers who are looking to um, get some training for their employees or future employees, um, and that's through the Job Training Fund, which Carmen is well aware of um, yes. and offers, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, up to 50% match for training costs. That's right, yeah. That's one of our programs at the division. That sounds like a good one, the Job Training Fund huh? yeah, uh, yeah. for employers. Huh? Yeah, any company yeah. that has a training need, whether it's getting employees up to speed on Excel or some other kind of new software or an advanced manufacturer that buys a new piece of equipment, for example, and they need their workers to to get trained on that um, equipment specifically, they can apply for this grant funding, and it's a yeah one to one matching program. Wow. So the, it's one of our most popular programs. People oh, really that really is love terrific. It. That is uh, an outstanding program. Uh, how long has this uh, program been in operation? So the grant went into effect in 2011, okay. um, and we got working pretty quickly after that. Um, but as you can imagine, with a $20 million grant and um, building up infrastructure all across the state at seven colleges, it took some time to, to get that all set. Um, also, as I mentioned, we developed several new programs. Um, so I would say that we've had most of the programs uh, rolling for, I think, probably the last semester is when we could say that we were pretty much all going uh, and ready to accept students in all of them. Um, and like I said, it's pretty great to be able to report that we've already had some success. That's great. And uh, enrollment is good? Yep. Um, of course, we're always looking to enroll more, mm-hmm. and we are developing new programs as I speak. Um, we have uh, some boot camps, for example. We call them boot camps yeah. uh, for CNC uh, accelerated training. Um, so now, for for the benefit of those of us who don't know what that is, mm-hmm. who live sheltered lives <laughs> like us radio people, what what is that? CNC specifically. Yeah. Um, so it's computer numerical controlled machining, and what that means is that if you imagine back in the day, um, manufacturing, say, make with metal. Um, they, you could do precise manufacturing, but it was all manual, all hands-on work. Um, these days, there is still some hands-on work, but most of the work is done based on the computer reading programs. And so what the uh, employers are looking for now are not necessarily people to do all that manual work, but people who know how to program these machines so that they can do the work for them. And it allows uh, manufacturing to occur uh, more quickly, uh, more safely, and also in a much more precise fashion. And uh, I would imagine there's quite a demand uh, for people who are able to do that these days. Absolutely. Statewide and CNC is one of our highest demand um, skills, I would say. Um, We have the evolvement or the evolution (laughs) of um, even the CNC machines themselves going from a three axis to a five axis, for example. Um, And as the needs grow for super precise manufacturing, and I'm talking about things that, you know, might go into someone's spine or life critical. Exactly. Um, On the seacoast with um, our partner Safran uh, and Albany, uh, they're aerospace composite uh, manufacturers. And when you think life critical, these are, you know, the people who are making blades that go into planes. And so obviously those that keeps people in the air. Um, So, yeah, getting back to the CNC, it, it basically is. The mind, I, I like to say, uh, mind and machine. <laughs> yep. that, that's basically how it works. Well, you know, the um, aerospace industry is uh, thriving uh, in New Hampshire, so I would imagine that uh, there's a, a lot of call for uh, 
some of the uh, the programs that uh, that you provide uh, for people to go into that uh, that line of work? There absolutely is, and I and I think that was basically what got this ball rolling. That's what brought the grant here to New Hampshire, is that there was enough of a repeated call by these advanced manufacturers who are seeing a lot of attrition and especially expecting a lot more in the next five to 10 years, um, just simply due to an aging workforce. But then you also have the evolution of technology. Um, And then on top of that, you have, like you just said, these new industries moving in to our state, uh, which is fantastic for our economy. Um, But what that has created is what they're calling a skills gap. Um, And it, like I said, brought this this grant to the state, and we hope to fill it. (laughs) And it looks like you're doing a pretty good job so far. I mean, the program is pretty much really in its infancy at this time. But uh, uh, I tell you, it's uh, fascinating and uh, uh, great opportunities for a lot of people here. And uh, this this is just great. And you're just now seeing some people start to graduate or soon will be graduating, like from the certificate programs, for example. What are you uh, starting to see in terms of those folks getting jobs? Um, So we are already seeing jobs, like I said, everywhere for CNC. We've had hires in the composites industry already, um, welding. Um, One of the things I like to talk about the most because, well, it's true, but it also just it illustrates what we're doing so well and, and also the success of our students is that we actually have times where we're convincing our students, nope, stay and, you know, and finish the program because we have our industry partners calling and saying, who do you have for me? And there have been several occasions where we have students hired before they're even done studying. Mm. The beauty of that is that not only are these students driven to continue the education, but they're being supported now by their new employer. In many cases, and of course I can't speak for the companies, but I can say that in many cases, they're then being supported um, with tuition reimbursement and other perks like that. Now, how long are these programs? So they go everywhere from two weeks to two years. Um, we have everything from these boot camps uh, in, during which students can get non-credit certificates. It's basically industry training. Um, and those boot camps range at this point from about two to eight weeks. And then you have your credit certificates. Those also range in time. But, um, for example, our Advanced Composites Manufacturing Certificate is a six-month program. And then um, you, the Associate's Degree programs are your average two years. That's great. I think it's a great message to to let people know how much the industry has changed, you know, in the past decade or so, and that the jobs really are very high-tech jobs, very clean environment. And yeah, all of the manufacturers that I've worked with, they they have great continuing education programs to help people who who may come in at entry level work their way up. So there's tons of room for advancement. Uh, And they're they're good paying jobs with benefits. And it's a it's a great industry to get involved in. So do they do you see a lot of students doing um, internships, like maybe the ones that are going for the full two year associate's degree? We do. um, And we work also with our um, industry partners to arrange internships um, and also apprenticeships. Um, And also then in addition to those internships, sometimes then they'll be working full or part time while continuing their studies. Now, what about the boot camps? How would somebody find out about uh, a, a boot camp that you're you're having? Um, at this point, uh, if they know which boot camp that they are interested in, I would call the college uh, that's offering that boot camp um, and ask for it by name. Um, if they're not sure, if they just want general information, they can go to ampednh.com, um, www w a m p e d n h dot com um, and the news and events page has all of our updated information um, there are articles on that and in those articles is uh, all of the contact information I mean these are uh, great opportunities for uh, you know advanced education or if you're thinking about uh, changing careers or uh, yes. uh, virtually anybody and uh, I, I, I don't know how, how many people really uh, know about it at this point. So I mean, I know it's in its infancy, but uh, how do you get the, the word out? So we have the website that I yeah. mentioned. Um, we also have a television spot that I run um, when it's recruitment periods. We're on the radio. Um, we've been treated very well by the media. I'm very grateful for that, um, helping us get our, our stories out. Um, and we've also been really well supported by uh, organizations like uh, DED, NH Works. Um, even the governor has been extremely supportive of right. us, helping us get the word out. Yeah, we have um, 
in October, well, it'll be end of September, beginning of October this year, is uh, Manufacturing Week. And the governor actually does a summit, Manufacturing Summit, that'll be on October 2nd. So there's a lot of fun activities that um, are going on during that time frame that's trying to get the message out to people about the industry in general and the opportunities that it offers. And it's a great way to get, you know, families and their children kind of involved and going to visit manufacturing facilities, just kind of see what it's like inside, because most of us don't ever know what goes on inside those buildings if we you know if we don't work there we wouldn't know but um yeah there's a lot of fun stuff going on to kind of get the word out about the industry in general i don't know if you want to talk maybe a little bit about some of the boy scouts uh new merit badge or some other things that are going on in that that absolutely and actually the 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 boy scouts is a good example of uh something i'd like to say uh too is is carmen touched on it a lot of people don't really really get it until they see it when we say clean high tech comfortable atmosphere uh, we really mean it. Um, so the Boy Scouts, we just recently had Troop uh, 123 out of New Boston uh, come and visit two of our labs. Um, they got in touch with us because they are taking on um, the admirable, admirable task of adding a manufacturing badge to the national offerings. Oh, right yeah, I, I think oh, it's cool. fantastic. Yeah. Um, so what they have to do is there are, there are several requirements that they have to fulfill in order to make that happen. Um, some of them are things like demonstrating uh, quality career paths, uh, leadership and growth opportunities, and then also environmental stewardship. So as part of their learning about the industry um, and also what we can offer in the industry, they came and they visited two of our labs, our mechatronics lab in Manchester Community College, and also our advanced composites lab um, in Rochester which is part of Great Bay Community College. And there, uh, it was really fun to watch them. Um, we, we had them do some activities, some very basic skill building activities, um, taught them a little bit about the composites industry, for example, and the robotics industry. And they just dove right in, and it was fantastic to watch. Um, and since then, speaking of um, good opportunities to get the word out, um, their uh, leaders have uh, helped us spread the word it's gone across the country. Wow. And yeah, so I'm, I'm cool. hoping for the best for them, um, that they can get that badge. And then the beauty of that is that starts spreading the word, you know, through to those younger ages where these are where very strong opinions of the world are starting to form. Sure. Um, so I'm hoping that that will have a big impact. Well, absolutely so. It's always uh, good to be armed with a lot of knowledge and uh, different options uh, that you have for your career. And this is certainly uh, a great way to... Uh, to advance, and you know, so many, uh, so many places are being downsized these days uh, in our economic world the way it is today. But advanced manufacturing here in New Hampshire is is thriving. It certainly is. It's actually high. Uh, advanced manufacturing is high tech, and high tech is our largest industry here in New Hampshire. I think that's something that not many people know. Um, but it makes up, the last I checked, 19 percent of our industry economically, um, and it is strong. And there is demand uh, going and looking uh, in the years coming. Well, it's uh, just a great uh, program, and uh, I know as as we said. You've only just begun, really, in this program, really. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, the sky really seems to be the limit for this. I mean, I'm sure you'll be adding courses all the time and, and different aspects of manufacturing. And uh, it, it's terrific what you have right now, but I can I can see there's tremendous uh, potential for growth as well. I love that the sky actually isn't even the limit, too. <laughs> it, 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 go to of our space. Space. <laughs> Exactly. Some of our industry partners actually have components that they yeah. make right here in New Hampshire that are yeah. in space. Um, so, yeah, I that's, again, when you think, you know, what's out there that people don't realize, people don't realize what we're doing here in New Hampshire. Yeah. And it's incredible. It really is. Um and that's one of the messages I try to get out is it, it it's not what you think. It's way better yeah. and it's way cooler. Um, so as a matter of fact, if people wanted to kind of follow us uh, and, and keep up with the cool things that are going on, we're on Facebook, too, and Twitter. Okay. Uh, Facebook.com slash AmptonH and the same with uh, Twitter. Um, and just today I was talking about um, we have Girls Technology Day going on at NHTI. That's right. Um, we've got the Boy Scouts and we've. We love giving people tours because, like I said, seeing is believing. Um, so I would say to anyone out there who um, might be skeptical, uh, come and take a tour, and I bet you will change your mind. How would they uh, get information about doing that? 
Uh, well, they can contact me if they want. Um, uh, there's a form at the bottom of the uh, website, mm-hmm. AmptonH.com. Um, if you fill out that form, it will let me know, and I will be in touch quickly uh, to see what we can do to help. Yeah, individuals, groups, both? Uh, um, both. Yeah. Uh, yep. It takes a little planning, obviously, sure, and some scheduling, sure. but we are generally happy to have uh, anyone who has an interest in pursuing a career mm-hmm. in training. Well, and uh, we talked about women getting into uh, the high tech world. Do you see more and more of that all the time? Not as much as I want to see okay. yet, but it is increasing. And what I like, uh, the good news is that there is demand for women. Uh, everyone's arms are open to women. Uh, this is not a gender specific uh, industry. Um, and actually, it being Women's History Month, <laughs> right? it's, it's a great time to be talking about this. Um, there is so much opportunity here, and I can tell you, too, that the women who I have spoken to who um, have gone through our training and are now hired or who have had jobs uh, for years in the industry, nothing but good things to say. They're very happy. Um, they fulfill an important role. Um, let's face it, <laughs> these are not my words, but what I've been told is that women tend to be um, very observant, um, perfectionist at times. Mm-hmm. And when you're talking about precision manufacturing, mm-hmm. yep. that Perfect. perfection <laughs> works it's perfectly. Fit, right? Exactly. It's a great fit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, they're well suited in that way. Um, one of our students, uh, her name is Carrie, who graduated uh, from Great Bay and uh, was hired um, very shortly after, put it to me this way. She said, this offers me all of the challenges that I, I have in my real life, um, except I'm more appreciated for it. <laughs> and, and obviously she's getting paid, and she's getting paid really well. So, What would you say to encourage uh, more people, Desiree, to get into the uh, high-tech field, more women to get into it? Um, well, you got to keep an open mind. Like I said, I would also encourage anyone who is um, – having some second uh, thoughts to visit one of our labs, come talk to us. Um, During manufacturing week, we also um, open up, well, not we, our manufacturers, some of them open up to the public so they can actually see those environments. Um, Just come and really learn what it is all about. Um, And this will make men and women happy, but uh, something that I think is an encouraging thing to mention is, is the pay. We all like money, right? They're great jobs. (laughs) You won't have trouble finding work. So again, um, I can't speak for our manufacturing partners, but I can tell you that studies that were done, not by me, um, have shown that in general, the uh, private manufacturing uh, industry here in New Hampshire, on average, pays 22% more than the average of all private industry here in New Hampshire. So that's, you know, that's pretty persuasive if you ask me. And do you find the, the pay is pretty equal between uh, men and women? Um, I would say it probably follows trends. I honestly haven't looked that up. Yeah. So I'll have to look that up no, and but get I back think to you. One of the things I've read is a lot of the difference be- that contributes to the pay, the pay gap between men and women is the fact that women aren't in as many technical fields, which are the higher paying fields. Mm-hmm. So, good point. And I think yeah. it's, That's a very it's, good point. Yeah. You know, we're not meeting the demand in New Hampshire that, that our private sector has for graduates in science, technology, engineering, and math. I mean, there's, I forget what, there was a recent report that came out that we needed like 10,000 graduates or something a year for the next four years, which is huge. Mm-hmm. So there is a, a lot of demand in the sector. And I think, you know, as, as far as what, what women might be doing when they enter those types of companies, if, if they're doing the, the technical work, yeah, they're going to be paid the same amount as, as their male counterparts, I would think. That's a very good point. I actually just saw a study, too, that mentioned pretty much that exact same thing um, and also gave some t- statistics on the um, fraction of women versus men. And, right, in in engineering, mm-hmm. I think it was only maybe 3% of women. So mm-hmm. that's yeah. that's a very small number. And it needs to be bigger because it can be bigger, as far as I know. And it will be bigger and in the future be. because of AMPT, right? That's, That's right. right. Yes. <laughs> well, a great segment and a lot of uh, good information. And again, uh, the website is ampednh.com if you want uh, more information, A-M-P-E-D-N-H.com. Very simple. And uh, Carmen Lorenz from the New Hampshire Division of Economic Development and Desiree Crosley, Marketing and Outreach Coordinator for AMPT. Uh, Great to have you with us. And uh, again, great information. And uh, I know that uh, this will encourage a lot of people to uh, 
pursue more information about uh, AMPT and uh, jobs in the high-tech field. Thank you. I hope so. Yeah, thanks for having us. Great to have you with us.